for joining us on 263 Chat today. Thank you for having me, Nigel. I've really got it. Tell us about Fro Group and when you started. What was the inspiration? Wow. Do you know what? I started, I've always been a talker. Yeah. I've always thought that information sharing is really important. And I think I just landed on the hair thing because so many women are asking me what I was doing with my own hair. I'd go to a party and ladies would, you know, touch my scalp, strangers, yeah. and not even white people, black people, yeah. from Zimbabwe, yeah. and I yeah. <laughs> and they would be like, oh, there are no tracks here, how do you do that with your hair? And so I just started talking to people about it, and I'm very vocal on Facebook, and I just created a, what I called a challenge, and asked ladies to get involved with what I was doing with my hair, and so my Facebook friends invited their Facebook friends, and... Yeah, I haven't looked back since. Okay. Um, how long ago was this? It was, I'd say, 2010. Okay, 2010. And um, that's when I started really talking a little bit about it on Facebook. And sort of end of 2010. Okay. Um, and then 2011, by 2011, I'd say mid-2011, that's when I started my blog. Afro Afro blog. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm actually known as Afro. Exactly. You shouldn't be calling me Lani. <laughs> Afro. <laughs> and you chose the name. How? Was How? It? Yeah. It was, you know. Do you know that was even before I thought about hair? Really? Yeah. Um, it's like a little, little nickname. Little that's just nickname. You just started from way back. I started back. as Afro. I can't, I can't even remember. Afrocentric, I think oh, I started Oh, right, as. right, right, right. I remember. I think being in um, Australia with this skin color. Yeah. Your identity is really important. Okay. And so I just wanted to identify with where I was coming from and that's how I started. Awesome. A lot of um, Australians and you know they um, Lebanese Australian and Australian Italian and so forth and, yeah. and I think that's where it comes from really. But without any thought behind it, this is just hindsight. <laughs> but I didn't really think about it that much. Yeah, at the at I, the time. At the time no, okay. No. And so it started off as a hobby? Yeah. As, as most of these things do. Yeah. And then, uh, obviously, you know, it's something that you're passionate about, yeah. as we can tell. Yeah. And now it's a business. That's right. Okay. The switch from hobby to business. Wow. Um, of course, there was a lot of intention. Yes. We're now like, no, no, this is serious. Very much. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, when was that? I had been thinking about creating a business years before even I started blogging. I've always been business minded, I've always wanted to be a woman that owned their own business and you know, yeah, created something out of nothing. And I think when I landed on the hair thing, I was just thinking, wow, this is fantastic. A lot of women are interested simply because I'm talking to them about what I'm doing with my hair. Um, they've defined me as the authority on hair, which I found quite humbling. And so... You are, you are to me. <laughs> Thank you. I don't, I, 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 don't, I don't have any hair myself, but you know, <laughs> if, if I had, I would come to you. <laughs> um, and, you know, I started taking really seriously. And I decided that, you know what, if um, I think it's grown organically. I've always been asked to do certain things. And when it's within my capacity, I've wanted to give to the people that are asking me. So I've always wanted to share. And when I realized that it was getting too big for me just to handle on my own, I decided that, you know what, let me extend this to become an organization because of sustainability and things that I want to do in the future. Yeah. Um, so now, obviously we saw your website earlier this year. I love that website. Very clean. Thank you. Very clean. I love that. I love, and I remember looking at all the, the, the beautiful women on this. <laughs> Where are these girls? Where are they? <laughs> are you from Zimbabwe? I had a lot of men knocking on the door. Oh, really? Like, so, who yes. are these people yeah. that you've introduced to the world? <laughs> Great. Great. And you're, you're, so the website tells us you're a founder and hair consultant. Yes. What does your normal day look like Wow. as a hair consultant? I mean, you there's a Skype beta, so you do Skype consult, you know, That's consultation. That's you? Yeah, no, 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 no. I've been been on the website. I've been on the website. <laughs> More than once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My day. Um, I don't really don't have a nine to five at all. Mine is twenty four seven. I've got clients internationally, right. and so my Skype consultation. The reason why my business has started being an online business is simply because 
um, globally I've got people that want to talk to me about you know the issues that they're facing and I'm not just talking about how do I comb my hair yeah. I'm really talking about women that have bald patches on their head that have been hiding away from really I'd just say confidence issues okay. around you know showing their true hair and the true nature of who they are based on the natural hair that comes out of their head and so a lot of women call me you know in the middle of the night when people are sleeping uh, to talk about you know certain issues and then that also leads into very personal things that they're going through that may have led them to that point and so I take that really really seriously and I thought I needed to create a platform to for them to access me access my time so that we can really kind of turn around what they're facing and so far my clients have been happy that's good um, yeah. I've, I've heard um, great, great reviews um, so this no longer becomes about hair it becomes about something else much yeah. more than just hair then yeah. it's now like well I'm having trouble at work and so forth and so you become uh, part of their lives I guess yeah and I think that's the distinction between being a hairdresser and being a hair, hair consultant um, hairdressers are professionals in their own right and they do I think they do such an amazing job and so I didn't want to crowd that space you know that's not my expertise I can get your hair growing Nigel yeah. but I can't style it for you I don't know <laughs> first thing doing that but I think the hair consultancy for me started because a lot of women in diaspora just didn't know how to do their hair and some of the women that I talk to their hair is falling out and so we started talking about you know the science behind taking care of yourself and how to get your hair growing again and again that affects your body, your body. yeah so then you also then you start touching on issues of diet as well diet stress what you're allowing in uh what you're doing to your hair to begin with in terms of hiding it away from the world weaves yeah. um some of my clients have had weaves for decades really? and it's taken really yeah, it's taken Why? maybe, wow, a confidence thing, I believe. They believe, a lot of my clients believe that to be successful, a lot of professional, powerful women, mm. to be successful, you need to have hair that looks a certain way. And if my hair doesn't look like that, I'll be looked at, I'll be shunned from high positions. And therefore, it's easy for me, I'm a mother of three perhaps, to wear a wig or weave my hair. And when you're doing that continually for a number of years, your scalp begins to suffer. And so what I work when I'm talking to women of that who've gone through that, where working a lot of on confidence issues. I see. But then really concentrating on the hair situation. And you find that within, you know, six months of working with one client, they start rocking their own hair. You know, even relaxing and I'm fine with that. Okay. But showing Showing, their hair, showing their, showing hair, their hair, hair to and, and the that, world and, that, and that's 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 a victory for you i guess and i think wearing a weave sometimes for some of the clients that i've spoken with i'm not speaking about everybody that was a false confidence based on something that was defined predetermined and then when they start rocking their weave they've got a new found confidence that i find quite interesting okay. yeah do you think that a lot of this a lot of the issues that you come across are due to the media and our perception of what beauty is oh definitely and I think the reason why I started talking on YouTube was because the women on YouTube that talked about hair didn't look like me uh, they were light-skinned or they were from America they had what I thought was different hair texture to mine and so that's just YouTube if you switch on the television I'm the opposite of what they call beautiful I'm black <laughs> I'm short. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and so. Yeah. And I guess you wanted to to hit that issue head on. Yeah. I think hair, when you look at it, you might think it's superficial, but it really isn't. It's the first step to really um, creating our own identity and, and being proud of who we are and where we come from. Um, yeah. And your audience, I mean, they're not just Zimbabwean anymore, right? No. Okay, so you've got people all, all over the world, all over Africa, I suppose? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, your trip home, I know, friends, family, that's standard. But what, your trip home here, so you're in Zim now, um, there must be a plan for, for, for the Frogu. Definitely. Okay. Uh, 
are you in a position to share some of them? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. some of some of those little secrets. Bit, yeah, a little bit. bit. Yeah, okay. No, sh so share with us. Tell us. I think um, when I sit down with people, they're like, oh, so you know, what was your strategy from day one? I, I didn't have a strategy day one. I think what I, I've done over time, Pro Group has been it's an organic growth for me. It's been an organic growth. I've seen the need based on people talking to me about it, and then I've taken that step of faith okay. and grown that way. Um, but the reason why I'm in Zimbabwe is because part of my plan is to really have a home base. Um, I want to create products. I want to create a quality product that's shared to the world. And I want people to buy it, not because for Zimbabweans are created all they need money. No. I want people to buy it because it's an amazing product and it works. And it has, it has to be as well. I think we're a in ourselves. You're learning a lot. Learning a lot. Okay. But your meetings have been uh, exciting, fruitful, um, yeah. things that you need to obviously work on in the yeah. background. Yeah, definitely. Good. definitely. That, that's good to hear. Um, so you, you're talking about new products. So your own dark and lovely, I guess? Is that, <laughs> <laughs> is that the kind of stuff? Yeah. Um, or not, not, not so much dark and lovely, but the same, but the same kinds of... Yeah products your own products okay. yeah I want to create my own products okay. I want to create yeah I want Pro Group to be known not to resell yeah. something that someone has decided is a great product I want to create something that works for Zimbabwean women and men and of it to be high quality like I said before and then share it with the world and in, in creating a product I want to also want to provide opportunities for people to be involved in that aspect of things whether it becomes growing the, 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 the ingredients of the product in Zimbabwe whether it becomes opening factories in Zimbabwe I want them to be a part of you know the way that program grows and I think that's really really important I've been in the not-for-profit sector for a number of years and being on that side of, of the sector um, I thought it really really important to create an industry back home So you're looking to create jobs? I'm looking to create jobs. That's I'm nice. looking to create jobs. That's, that's great. Um, so what can we look forward to in the future? So, say one year from now. Um, one year from now, you might see one or two products <laughs> being sold in yeah. Zimbabwe. Yeah. Here's hoping. Yeah. I shouldn't cross my fingers, yeah. should I? But here's hoping. Um, it's a really tough one. High hopes for program and where it's going. Um, like I said before, I've taken really small steps uh, based on my cap capability. Um, but I would hope that uh, 12 months from now, a few more people will be seeing products dotted around Zimbabwe for everyone to enjoy. You've already got a product out there now. Yeah. What is that? Tell, tell us a little about it. <laughs> now we'll take a photo for yeah. you. So how do we find you? What, what are you uh, what's the website? Um, how do we find you guys on Twitter, Facebook? Yeah. What do we find you? How do we get in touch? Sure. Uh, my website is Pro Group, so it's P-H-R-O Group, G-R-O-U-P dot com. And I'm on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash hair challenge. Hair challenge. Hair challenge. And then you can follow me on Twitter, Froetti, which is P-H-R-O. East. See? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, I was educated. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can follow Pro Group on Twitter as well. As well. Yeah. Okay. 
great. Um, we wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. We'll be, you know, following your journey Thank as you. always. Thank you. And we look forward to more interviews. Thank you very much. And we look forward to more YouTube videos, <laughs> more YouTube videos. that have nothing to do with what I can do with my own hair. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Ed.